our school is typical of the district schools in American rural areas. While it might seem large for a town of 3,000 people, it serves all the smaller communities within a radius of 15 miles. We have almost 600 students now, boys and girls between the ages of 6 and 18. When I was appointed principal 30 years ago, the school was just a small wooden building where pupils of all ages received their instruction in the same room at the same time. Today, this building has replaced all the little schoolhouses of the district. Here, rural children have educational facilities similar to those in larger cities. The reason I tell you all this is because of a letter I received in the mail. It was a letter from Germany. It was from a group of high school students who wanted to know about our school. The letter was addressed to me, but I didn't think that I was the one to answer it. I decided to turn it over to my pupils. I took the letter to the ninth grade social studies class and discussed it with Mrs. Jackson, the teacher. These children were about the same age as the German students, and they listened with interest as the teacher started to read. Dear principal, the letter said, we have heard about your school from an American visitor, and we are writing to ask if you could send us some information about it. We should like to know how country children, like us, live in America and what they learn at school. Mrs. Jackson asked for comments, and there were quite a few. Peter thought we should tell them how, starting with the ninth year of school, each pupil chooses his own course of studies. Roberta felt that they would be more interested in hearing about our drama society. Mark had another suggestion. Since everyone seemed to have his own opinion, why not let each one give his own reply? Mrs. Jackson thought that was a good idea. Did the class think so too? Margaret went further. Let's make this our term project, she said. Everyone agreed with that proposal. They divided the class into groups with similar interests so that each subject would be thoroughly covered. Mrs. Jackson supplied reference material and advice, but the actual work was done by the children themselves. From the way they tackled that assignment, I was convinced that they were the ones who best could answer their fellow students abroad. I hope the German children will agree when they receive these reports. Each was written with care and reflection, like a personal letter to a friend. My name is Peter. I live on a farm, like more than half the kids in the school. My dad is a fruit grower, and I help him with the work. There's almost always something about the orchard that requires my help. I like being out in the open air and going on long hikes in the woods. But as for being a farmer when I grow up, I just can't make up my mind. I talk about it with mother and dad, and they seem to understand. They answer my questions and encourage me to think. They want me to decide for myself. The guidance counselor at school also encourages me to make my own decision. He advises against taking a specialized program until I feel more certain. 
He keeps giving us tests for aptitude and preference. Should I prepare for college entrance? Should I take vocational training? He suggests I wait until I find out exactly what I can do best. There are many suggestions in the pamphlets in our library, but I haven't found the right one yet. Since I'm only in the first year of high school, I still have time to decide. Meanwhile, I'm studying English composition and literature, a required course for everyone in school. Also required are social studies, to give us an understanding of the world we live in, no matter what career we choose. I'm taking general science as an elective subject, because I think it's interesting. And what I learn here will be useful to me, whether or not I decide to go on to a university. Hygiene is another course that's required, so that we will know about the functions of the body and the habits that safeguard our health. The rules we learn in class are put into practice when we go to the gym for exercise. Basketball is one of my favorite indoor sports. Depending on the seasons and the weather, we also have swimming, baseball, tennis, football, and skiing. Exercise is supposed to make you healthy and strong. It makes me awfully hungry. Everyone in school, from beginners to seniors, eats in the same lunchroom. It's just an ordinary classroom that's used as a cafeteria at noontime. It's a little crowded, but we get good meals for only a few cents. My friend Tom spends all his spare time practicing on the saxophone. It doesn't seem to help much. If we have a free hour between classes, we can use it for anything we like. I do my practicing with the school orchestra. Sometimes we sound much better than we do today. Really. Anyway, we always have a good time. Wouldn't it be funny after all the careers I've thought about if I turned out to be a musician? I'll just have to wait and see. Meanwhile, maybe you'd like to hear from Margaret. I'm Margaret. I'd like to tell you about some of the things that are important to me. So I'll start with my family. Both my parents work. So I take care of my brother and sister when we're not in school. It's not hard, and besides, it's good experience for the time when I have a family of my own. I'm studying home economics. That covers everything connected with making a good home. I think all girls should learn these things first, no matter what occupation they choose later. I'm taking art appreciation as an elective subject, because I love to look at paintings of great artists. Sometimes we see films of great works of art. The original paintings are in museums all over the world. Although it's not required, I'm also studying French. Next year, I'll take typing and shorthand. Then I can always get a job in an office if I ever need one. 
as for actually choosing a career, I haven't decided definitely yet. My friend Anne made up her mind long ago. She's going to be a nurse. Roberta wants to be an actress. She's a good dancer, too. Tom isn't too sure yet. He has a knack for fixing things and will probably end up as a mechanic. Mark doesn't have that problem. He knows exactly what he wants to do. I'm Mark, and I'm going to be a dairy farmer like my dad. Maybe even a better one, because I can study scientific farming here in school. Dad had to learn it all by himself and keep the farm going at the same time. Already, I know some of the differences between good livestock and bad, and how to recognize the signs of certain diseases in cattle. They show us how to test samples of milk, which we bring from our own cows. Even a farming student has to spend time in the school library. We all do. Girls who want to be teachers, like Kit and Marie, spend a lot of time here, reading and studying. I'm also taking shop, because a farmer has to know how to build things. The school supplies the tools. I buy the lumber, with money I earn by selling eggs from the farm. It's interesting learning to do things like a man, but it's also fun, when classes are over, to go across to the ball field and watch a good game of soccer. and teachers have an organization which takes care of our special problems, called the PTA. One nice thing about it, in our school, is they let us take care of them, too. Once, when we wanted to give a party, to raise money for the school orchestra, the grown-ups called a meeting, and our student delegates were invited. They stood up and argued for our plan, and we won. But what was even more important was having the right to speak out among grown-ups. Shine your mind all the way back. Same old track, and make your feet go wiggity whack. All four ladies march around inside of the ring, and when you get home, swing your partners. First couple from they from and they lay to the right. It makes children feel good the way grown-ups join in at our Saturday night square dances. Parents and children, teachers and pupils, everyone dances with everyone else. It makes no difference how old you are or how young. On graduation day, diplomas are given to all those who have completed 12 years of satisfactory schoolwork, whether they studied agriculture or science or government or anything else. This means they are finished with high school and can go on to a university or to work, depending on what they want to do and how well they are prepared for the careers they have chosen. 
Well, those are some of the answers to the boys and girls of Germany. After looking them all over, it seems to me that the reports of Peter and Margaret and Mark are typical of the stories of our pupils in our school and most rural schools in America. However, something is missing. There's something children wouldn't think about ordinarily. So I am adding a few words to their message to say something about the relation between our school and our local government. The district school board is the guardian of the welfare of our school. Right now, for example, we're suffering from a shortage of classroom space. The board recommends enlarging our building and calls a town meeting to discuss it. It's up to the people of the district to decide on this proposal because they are the ones who will have to pay for it. Naturally, they want to know how the money will be raised. It is explained. If the people are in favor of the project, the state will approve a bond issue on which we can borrow all the necessary funds at once. Then, with reasonable taxes, we can pay the loan back conveniently over a period of many years. This plan seems both desirable and practical. I hope and believe that most townspeople will agree when we vote on the question next week. Now, instead of mailing the individual reports, we have decided to put them together into this film so that we can send them not only to the children who wrote us, but to their fellow students throughout Germany as well. We hope it gives them some idea of our school 